Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's talk about how to configure your build a pie. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Before we start setting up the pie, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So picking up where we left off Tuesday, let's go ahead and take a look at how to start configuring the build a pie system for your current setup. Now I'm gonna be working with a Yezu 891 today and a little uh, inexpensive USB sound card, but your setup should be fairly similar. Now, if you remember from last time, I had not even uh, changed my Pi password or done any of the localization. So let's go ahead and take care of those things first. So I'm just going to close out of this and we'll go up to the main Pi menu. We're going to come down to Preferences and Raspberry Pi Configuration. Once that box opens up, let's go ahead and choose change the password and I'll go ahead and enter in a new password here twice and choose OK. The next thing we want to do is maybe we want to change our host name and we don't want that to be Raspberry Pi. Now guys, I don't change usernames because changing the username can create more issues than it's worth with permissions and being in the right groups and things like that. So typically to identify mine, I'll just change up my host name. Normally I would name this something like KM4ACK-891. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna call this Video Pi. Let's go ahead and jump over to localization. And the only thing I'm going to do uh, for the video here is I am gonna set the time zone. You would also want to go through each of these others and set everything up uh, for your current location. Once you get your time zone set correctly, we can just choose OK, give it a minute, and we'll choose OK again. It's gonna ask us if we want to reboot. I'm not going to do that right now. I'll take care of that in a few minutes. So I'm gonna choose No here. The next thing I want to do, if you're going to use rig control, we need to get FL Rig configured for your system. So again, from the main Pi menu, let's come to the ham radio subcategory and come down to FL Rig. Once that opens up, I'm going to choose Config, Setup, and Transceiver. For the rig here, I'm going to scroll down until I find the 891. I'm gonna go ahead in this next box where it says None, I'm gonna click the drop down arrow and I am looking for the USB connection from the Pi to the radio. And I know for the uh, 891, I need this one here. And then my baud rate is set on my radio at 4800. So I'll go ahead and choose 4800 for the baud rate. We'll click initialize, give it a couple of seconds, and we should be connected up to the radio. We'll go ahead and close out of this. Now, uh, something odd I've noticed about FL Rig. Uh, if we don't go ahead and exit out of it and open it back up, it doesn't seem to want to save our settings. So after I've got it configured, always just choose File and Exit. That'll give it a proper shutdown, and then we can go ahead and open that back up. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and minimize that so it's out of our way. And the next thing you might want to do is take a look at your hotspot. So again, from the main menu, I'm going to go over to Ham Radio and come down to Hotspot Tools. Now, you will notice that I am connected to a Wi-Fi in my shack here. Inside of Hotspot Tools, this gives us a lot of information right up at the top. The status is enabled. That means the Hotspot is currently enabled and able to produce the Hotspot. Uh, if we change that by choosing Disable Hotspot down here, then it would be almost as if the hotspot uh, software was not on our Pi. Uh, so it kind of hides that uh, in the background for you and doesn't get in the way. You can always enable that at any time going forward. The state tells us that uh, currently the hotspot is inactive and it shows that because I am, again, connected to Wi-Fi in my shack. 
The main thing here though is we might want to change our SSID. So I'm going to come down to change name and password and I'm going to give it a new host name. Maybe we want to call this one uh, video Pi, and we'll leave the password set to the same thing and we'll choose OK. Again, it's going to tell us we want to reboot. I'm not going to reboot at this time. I'll do it after I get all of my other settings configured the way I need them. One last thing while we're in here, at the very bottom we can choose how often the hotspot script gets run in the background. The bold number here indicates that it gets run every five minutes. If this is something that's primarily going to live in your shack, you might want to set that to be uh, maybe 10 or 15 minutes between checks. That entirely depends on how you plan to run this Pi. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, tell you what, we need to open a terminal window. And all I want to do in the terminal is I want to verify what my sound card number is. To do that, I'm going to run a record space hyphen L. We'll press return and your card number should be card number two for my USB device. Now the only thing that might mess that up is if you're trying to run multiple sound cards. If that's the case uh, you're probably more of an advanced user and able of tackling this yourself. For the rest of us let's just know that we are working with card number two. Let's go ahead and open up Pat menu. So again, from the main Pi menu, we'll come down to Ham Radio and Pat Menu. We'll go ahead and come into our Settings and Config file, and then our current config settings. We'll come down through the options here. The main thing I want to change is Rig Control equals Yes. And you want to do this before you start configuring Pat or adding aliases, because depending on this setting right here, uh, aliases get added a different way inside of PAT um, if you're using the PAT menu system. So if you've left it set to no here and you go ahead and add aliases, it won't give you the frequency information that you need once you start making connections. Everything down below this should be okay. If you look right here, here's our card numbers for our RDOP command. You'll notice those are already preset to card number two comma zero for you. One other change that I do need to make inside of mine is mine needs to be set to PKT USB for the HF mode and that just moves it to the data mode when we're ready to make a connection. I can go ahead and press update here and that takes care of everything that I need for Pat Menu. Now, if you're also running a two meter setup uh, with a radio like the 857, you'd wanna double check those settings as well while you were in there. But that takes care of this here. Let's go ahead and quit that. Pardon me, guys. I've gotta interrupt myself right here for just a second. I realized when I was editing the video that I left out a critical step here and I wanted to show you guys how, uh, how I do this. With the particular sound card that I am using, I do not have uh, Vox, remember, in the sound card itself. So we've got to set up Pat to use PTT. Before, we had to go into the Pat configure file and modify things uh, manually inside that file. Well, the new Pat menu system, uh, you can see right here I'm running Pat menu 2.2.1. I believe as of 2.2, this was available. But with this uh, newer Pat menu system, if we come down to manage Pat WinLink, you'll see a new button here, set RDOP PTT. If I click on that, it's going to give us an option to set that to true or false. So I want to set it to true and click, well, right here it shows you it's currently set to false. So I'm gonna leave it set to true here and click the set PTT button. Now it is set to true and I don't have to go in and manually do that in the file. While we're here, let's cover one more new little feature of Pat Menu, and that's the set RDOP speed. So depending on your signal to noise ratio, when you're making a WinLink connection using Pat, you might want to speed this up. If you've got a really solid connection into the receiving gateway, 
you can go ahead and set this all the way up to 2000. If you've got a uh, marginal connection, you might want to drop it down to 200. It does show you what your current speed is set to here, but you can change that as needed. All right, sorry for the interruption. Let's get back to the original video. Beyond that, we just need to set up the sound card information for the individual applications that we want to run. So maybe we want to uh, go ahead and configure up JSA Call. So I'll go ahead and open that up. Once JSA Call opens, let's go ahead and give it our call sign here. And let's go ahead and give it our grid square in the next pink box. Let's jump over to the radio tab. And for my rig, I'm going to select FL Rig. The reason we're doing this, remember FL Rig is up here running in the background. We're going to feed our rig control commands from JS8 Call to FL Rig, which will pass that on to the radio. I'm going to select CAT as my PTT method. Now this totally depends on your sound card. If you're running a signal link, you would want to leave it set to Vox. Uh, if you're running some other sound card with a built-in Vox circuit, you would leave it set to Vox. My sound card is not Vox capable, so I am going to use CAT control to key the radio. Let's go ahead and jump over to the audio tab, and I'm going to come down to plug HW colon card equals device comma dev equals zero. Let's go ahead and choose that for both the input and the output and choose OK. You should start to see the waterfall. I'm going to go ahead and blow this up a little bit larger for us. And let's shrink that down just a little bit. So you do see that I have a waterfall here indicating uh, that we have audio coming from the card. I'll press the tune button and just watch my radio and the PTT did activate on my radio. Now you will notice that our sound level is too high over here. In order to fix that, we could go up to the speaker icon in the top right corner. I'm gonna right click on that and look at audio outputs and just select USB device. We'll come back to the speaker icon. We can right click on that again, come to audio outputs and output device settings. And I'm guessing the culprit uh, of that is going to be auto gain control on the card. So we'll come over to options and turn that off to begin with. And you'll notice that our sound did drop down to a more manageable level. Now we can play with the settings both here in the capture and here in the playback uh, windows to get that dialed in to exactly where you want it. Okay, so now that we finished up with JSA Call, let's go ahead and do one more application here. We'll do FL Digi next. Uh, FT8 is going to be very, very similar to JSA Call, so you shouldn't have any issues with either one of those. Let's go ahead and pull up FL Digi, and we'll just go ahead and use the configuration wizard by choosing Next. It's going to ask for my station call sign and my operator call sign, and I'm not going to go through every bit of this. We're just going to get uh, the basics done. We want to choose port audio on the next screen. You'll see that it's already filled in USB audio device HW2,0. And the playback, we're going to choose the exact same thing. Now we can go ahead and choose next. The next window here, I want to choose Enable FL Transceiver Control with FL Digi as a client. I am going to leave the next box unchecked, uh, and that's just personal preference, but I do not want FL Rig shut down every time I close FL Digi. Go ahead and choose the next button. I don't think there's anything that I need to do on this screen. We're using uh, PTT through FL Rig, so I believe we will be good there. If not, we may have to come back in here. So I'll just go ahead and click the finish button. We'll give this a second to open up. We'll enlarge that screen just a little bit. And I am going to go ahead and click the tune button just to make sure that the radio is keying. And I do see that my radio keyed up, 
So it looks like our cat control is working there as well. That's a pretty faint waterfall down there, but uh, we do definitely have audio coming through. Guys, that's the basics of getting your system configured after it's up and running. Of course, we may have some other applications and things like that that we have to go through and uh, configure, you know, for that specific application. But the vast majority of it is already done. Now we can take the system and get out there in the field and play radio. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.